I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continuously be in my mouth. I said something once, and I've got to correct it. It says that uh, we are to thank God um, in everything, but in Thessalonians it says we are to thank God for everything. So you thank him in everything, and you thank him for everything. You say, well, that doesn't sound right. Well, you know what? Your reasoning is not the reasoning of God. His thoughts are higher than your thoughts, and his ways are higher than your ways. One thing for certain, if you follow his path, you'll never be deceived because he is the truth. I, I heard about this um, story. This guy um, was in Walmart. And speaking of deception, he was in Walmart, and, um, and this senior lady kept staring at him, and, and he was puzzled. Why is she looking at me? And so... Uh, so he said to her, he says, do you know me? And uh, she said, well, no, I don't, I, I don't know you and, and you don't know me. She said, you just remind me of my late son who died. And uh, he said, oh, okay. And she said, w would you do me a favor? And, and he said, well, sure. What, what can I do for you? And uh, she said, when I leave, w would you wave at me and say goodbye, mom? And so... He said, well, sure, I, you know, I'd be more than happy to do that. That'll make you feel good. And she said, sure. So she got out of the out, out, up, up to the cashier and checked out and got her stuff and everything and walk, was walking out the door. And she turned back and she waved at him. And so he waved back at her and he said, goodbye, Mom. And so he got up, got his stuff at the uh, cashier. And um, the cashier said, that, that'll be $362. <laughs> He said, $362 for these little things? Yeah, he said, I didn't get that much. And she said, it, it was just so nice of you. She said, what are you talking about? You're so nice and kind. <laughs> kind to do what? <laughs> Pay for your mother's groceries. <laughs> he was deceived. The first deceiver in the Bible is the devil. The person that was deceived in the Bible was Eve. And as I study that, I'm getting ready you know, for uh, my second message as we prepare for Christmas. I thought about how he deceived her, and uh, she may have thought that God had made her inferior to Adam. The serpent just lied to her. He told her, you, and in the Hebrew, that's singular pronoun. He told her, you will not die. Your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil, if you eat it. So I believe to be like God, she decided to eat the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But everything that God made was good. He never said that the tree of the knowledge of good and evil wasn't good because the, the name in itself tells you that it's good. But he just flipped it all around and confused her. And, uh, and so uh, God told Satan, or uh, God told Adam, he told Adam in the very beginning, he says, but, he say, look, you can have any tree in this garden, but don't eat from this tree. The day that you do, he said, you will surely die. He told him, you, singular, will surely die. This was made before Eve was formed. God told Adam this before he had formed Eve out of Adam's body. That's why she didn't die until Adam ate, because he represented the family. And what he could have done after his wife ate was go to God on her behalf and said, look, 
Um, she ate this fruit, but I don't know nothing about dying. She seems to be okay. Um, is there a problem? And God would have solved the problem. But God knew ahead of time what Adam would do and what Eve would do. And so this is before God had formed Eve. And so there was another tree that was good. It was called the, the, the tree of life. But the serpent didn't suggest that Eve eat from it because, I believe, he wanted to kill Adam because if Adam had eaten from the tree of life first and then came to be with his wife, then he would have started a godly line of eternal life. But as I said, the devil knew all along that Adam was the key to this whole thing. And he knew that he couldn't go to Adam, so he went to Eve. Because like all men, we will do what mama says. Now y'all can say, oh, I, I, I run my house. I run. Yeah, yeah, mama run you. I tell you the truth. Yeah, you, just, you, you think you run in the house. Uh, mama is running the house. It's her nest. And all you do is supply what she needs in that nest. Yeah. <laughs> I learned that out early on. First year of our marriage. I thought I was, uh, I was running the house. And I realized that that's her nest. And however she wants to paint the walls, she's going to paint them walls the way she wants to paint them. I just try to tell her what goes together. No, baby, I don't think you had to put those two together, you know. And so she takes my advice, and she kind of listens to me every now and then. But Eve, she had a sway on Adam. Well, why not? She was made beautiful. Remember, everything that God made was good. And so when she came, uh, after she ate uh, the fruit, and she she came to uh, to Adam, and and I believe that the the devil wanted to, to kill Adam, Because his sin seed would be passed on to all of us. His seed in Eve makes the babies. Okay? So if he can get Adam to sin, then all the seeds that come through him will be tarnished and will die eventually. And that's what happened. His seed would be passed on to all of us. And uh, the serpent, the Bible says he was crafty, meaning he was shrewd. In fact, in in Ezekiel, um, it says that he uh, had the seal of perfection before he um, came down into the Garden of Eden. And he was full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. He's a beautiful, beautiful beast. And so... He knew sin would separate them from God. His pride and disobedience got him separated from God in heaven. It says uh, in Luke chapter 10, Jesus said, I saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning. So Satan fell before he tempted Eve. He used his wisdom to rob us and them of their peace with God. But Satan wasn't as wise as God. It's kind of like a chess game. Satan moved, and he thought he had God fenced in. He didn't realize that God was the one who made everything, including him. He wasn't as wise as God. He was an understudy in in, in the kingdom of all the angels and so on. And so God had another play. And uh, God told him, Satan that there would be hatred between his seed and Eve's seed. Whoa, wait a minute. Women don't have seed. The man has a seed. So the devil had to be going, what is he talking about? I thought I got Adam to, but Eve is going to have another seed and it's not going to be through Adam. What what is this all about? He didn't understand what God was saying, but he understood hatred. So Eve's seed in Genesis 
is Abraham's promised seed in Genesis chapter 15. Abe's seed is a sign that's recorded in Isaiah 7 and the son that's in Isaiah chapter 9. In Luke chapter 1, Mary's seed becomes our Savior. But Mary did not have relations with a man yet. That's because God told the serpent that the seed of the woman would crush his heel. Well, that's the seed that was placed into Mary without the help of any man. And we're going to see that all unfold this morning. Last week, we saw how peace happens. Peace happens when what's been broken comes back together. That's the idea of, 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 of peace. If you know anyone named Irene, the word Irene means peace. That's where we get the, the word peace from, and it means peace. It means to, to, to take broken pieces and then put them back together to make it whole again. And so we were, we were broken pieces because of the sin of Adam. He represented all of us. And so because he sinned, we all became damaged goods. We were all broken. Our relationship with God was broken, and then fear entered the world, and then death entered the world, and then all kinds of diseases entered the world. All of those things entered the world because of that one initial sin. Peace happens when broken pieces come back together again. Last week, we saw the angel Gabriel and what he told Zechariah. He told him his son, John the Baptist, would be born to prepare the way for the person who would be the Prince of Peace, and that was Jesus Christ. But Zechariah doubted. He doubted Gabriel. So he asked Gabriel for proof. Now look, let me tell you this. When we prayed and God gives us confirmation in his word, how we respond next is crucial. It's called a crisis of belief. And if you ever doubt God's word, here's what he did to, to Zacharias. He silenced Zacharias so he couldn't speak. And then he took away his hearing so that he couldn't hear. So they came up with this primitive sign language after uh, he came home and Elizabeth saw him not able to speak and, and not able to hear. And so they came up with this primitive sign language. And so uh, and when John was finally born, uh, they were trying to name John. And uh, they said, well, what, what should we name him? And so Elizabeth said, call him Zacharias. And then and Zacharias made some sign language to, 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 to appear to say, no, 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 no. And he, he asked for a piece of paper, and he got a piece of paper, and he wrote down, his name shall, shall be John. And as soon as he said that, he heard pop went into his ear, and his tongue was loose, and he could hear, and he could speak again. The word John means graciousness of God. And it was God's grace that was given to Elizabeth and John, uh, I mean, Elizabeth and, um, and Zacharias, so that they could have a child. So I don't know where you are with the Word of God. If God, if God has given you a word, stand on it. Don't doubt Him. If you doubt Him, He will pause your blessing until it's time for you to get it. Until you learn a lesson, you won't get it. So when he thinks you've learned a lesson because you're having to wait for something that you really need it desperately, then God will release it to you. That's what I've seen in my life. I don't know if you've seen it in your life, but if we don't believe God, God will silence our voice of unbelief until he completes his work. Zach knew what God did for Abe and, uh, and Sarah. I mean, he, everybody knew that history, how he came to them in their old age, and, and when he told them they were going to bear a son, they both laughed, and God said uh, in Genesis 18, is anything too difficult for the Lord? She's going to have a child just as I said she would. God will use John's mom's pregnancy in Luke to prepare Mary for God who is the one who does the impossible, and he will do the impossible for her. We're, we're going to see the, the veracity 
in John's gospel. And uh, not only that, but we're also going to see the virgin in, uh, in, in Luke's gospel, that is, and also the victory in Luke's gospel. Those are the three things we're going to see. It's going to be pointed out in, uh, to us as we go through uh, Luke. Let's look at the, the, the veracity in uh, Luke chapter 1 and uh, verse 1. It says this, Inasmuch as many have undertaken to compile an, an account of the things accomplished among us, just as they were handed down to us by those who, from the beginning, were eyewitnesses and servants of the word. It seemed fitting to me as well, having investigated everything carefully from the beginning to write it out for you in consecutive order, most excellent Theophilus, so that you may know the exact truth about the things you have been taught. So he, he, he's, he's laying out why Luke, the gospel, should be important and accepted. He details the first eyewitnesses account with whom he spoke. And these are the people who were personal eyewitnesses of the word. And so Luke verified every statement that they gave to him. He went back and fact-checked. Now, he was a, a physician, so he was very tedious about everything that was told to him. He just didn't believe he had to go and find proof, and he found proof, and he verified everything. And after ver verifying the veracity of it all, he put it in consecutive order. Some people don't believe in the virgin birth. But I gotta tell you this, if you don't believe in the virgin birth, then how can you believe in your spiritual birth? Both of them are supernatural. And both of them are impossible without God. You can say, I'll save myself, and you have to read Romans, and when you read Romans, it says there is none good, no, not one. All, all <laughs> are guilty. Every one of us. There is nothing that we can do to save ourselves apart from God's grace. So if you can't believe in the virgin birth, then chances are you have not believed in your spiritual birth, so you're not born again. Because if you can't believe that you're born again by faith through grace, in, uh, by grace through faith in Jesus Christ, then how are you saved? How many works do you have to do? Okay, well, well, who's, whose standard are you going by? Are you going by God's standard? Because there's only one standard. There's only one standard for righteousness, and God made it. So unless your righteousness exceeds those of the scribes and the Pharisees, you're not going to hit heaven. You're going to miss it by a country mile. So what is your standard of righteousness? Are you trying to be like somebody that you think is righteous? If you're not trying to emulate Jesus Christ, then you can't be anything but a sinner still. But see, the only way you can emulate him is that you've got to have the Spirit of God in you. Because it's only the Spirit of God that can give you the wisdom how to walk the way God wants you to walk. And, and, I, and I heard some people uh, talk about different various miracles. You know, not believing in those miracles. You know, you may not believe all of those miracles, but this is one miracle you've got to believe. You've got to believe in a virgin birth. If you don't believe in a virgin birth, then, and then how are you going to believe that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead after three days? See, it all, if you, the virgin birth is very important to our doctrine. It, it is the, the foundation for our belief. So if you don't believe in the virgin birth, then you can't believe in the spiritual birth because both of them are impossible without God. But Luke says it's true. And he went through all of the details and he laid it out succinctly. So to accomplish the virgin birth, Mary will have to surrender her will to God. Then she'd have to submit to God's will and then choose to sacrifice herself to God. Let's see that in Luke chapter 1, verse 26. To, now, in the six months, the angel Gabriel was sent to God, uh, sent from God to a city in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the descendants of David, 
and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming in, and I, I said, I was reading, I said, coming in, normally when people come in and knock on the door, but it said he just came on in. I'm thinking, how did he come in? Did he come through a door or did he just appear? I don't know. All I know is he came in and he greeted her. Favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was perplexed at this statement and kept pondering what kind of salutation this was. Then the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. That word found favor with God means you have, def- you have found divine favor by the grace of God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. In the Old Testament, it talks about Emmanuel. Even in Matthew, it talks about Emmanuel, meaning God with us. Jesus means he came to save us from our sins, of course. And, and, that, and that's, that was the whole point. Now, out of Mary, out of, out, out of all the Marys that were around at that time, God chose her. Why? One, because of her lineage. She had to fulfill the Old Testament prophecies about the virgin giving birth to a son that would be called the Son of God. It had to come through the divine, had to come through the, the, the kingly line, and it had to come through the priestly line. Well, it came through both with, 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 with Joseph and Mary. It came through both lines. And so he can now be priest, and he can now also be king, and he can also be our savior. Now, it's interesting because, see, after uh, Malachi, God hadn't said a word to anyone for uh, 400 years. So here is the angel Gabriel coming and speaking one to uh, Zacharias, and now he's speaking to Mary, and God, no one has ever heard about anyone speaking to, uh, uh, on behalf of God because no one spoke to anyone for that whole time frame. And so for the angel to come and said, oh, favorite one, <laughs> you know, you will conceive and you will bear a son and you shall name him Jesus, Uh, Everyone knew that the Messiah was coming, and everybody heard about Yeshua. That's that's the the Hebrew word for for, for Jesus. And so all of the folks heard about that, but Mary was willing to surrender herself to him out of all of the Marys. When Gabriel came in and he said she was highly favored, he said, "You you have divine favor. You have divine grace. Because of God's glorious grace, he chose us before the foundation of the world. And then he adopted us into his family. So, who is Jesus, a.k.a. Emmanuel? Luke chapter 1, verse 32. It says, he will be great, and he will be called the Son of, of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And his kingdom will have no end. Now, think about this. He will be so great that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess him as Lord to the glory of the Father. Now you say, well, people are not confessing him now. No, they're not. But one day is coming. One day is coming when they die and they face him when they are raised from their deaths. Because there's a resurrection of the dead, and there's a resurrection of all of us who have placed their, placed their faith in Jesus Christ. And so there will be a resurrection of those who are saved, and there will be a resurrection of those who died and went to hell. Hades is the temporary place. It's kind of like a penitentiary <laughs> uh, or whatever. But uh, they're going to get the, 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 the big house when, uh, when Jesus finally gives them the, the, the punishment that they need to, to get because they rejected him. But every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess. Let me show you verse 34. It says, Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I am a virgin? Now back then, when a man was betrothed to uh, his wife back then, uh, it probably was about a year or so, and some even say 
that they were engaged for longer than that because, Sue, amen, hallelujah. You praise Jesus now. That's right. Thank you. <laughs> Don't let the rocks cry out, you know. <laughs> and, so, and, so, and so Joseph had been engaged to her for, for at least a year. Some say, you know, she was a teenager, and maybe she was, um, you know, at, at, the, at a teenage year. From that moment on, she had been picked out and marked out, and, and, and Joseph had paid, you know, what was necessary uh, to enter into an agreement with the family to promise to take care of her and, and, and take care of her needs and all of that. But in any event, she was saying to herself, I have not known a man. In other words, I have not had sex with anybody. So how can this be? Now, that little word be, that verb, it's in the middle voice. The middle voice means the person is doing the action to themselves. So Mary is saying to Gabriel, how can I do this to myself? I, I don't understand. And you know my, my husband-to-be, he can't come in here. He can't, you know, if he did that, you know, he would, he would violate the, the agreement that, we, that he has with my father because he has to wait until we say, I do, before he can. And so uh, she was saying, well, how can, how can I do this? And, 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 but she won't have to do it because the Trinity will do it for her. The Trinity is her victory. Luke chapter 1, verse 35, it says, The angel answered her and said to her, The Holy Spirit, that's the first person, that is one person in the Trinity, will come upon you, and the power of the Most High, that's God the Father, will overshadow you. And for that reason, the Holy Child shall be called the Son of God. So you see the Trinity in that one verse. The Holy Spirit, God the Father, the Most High, and God the Son, Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit, of, uh, the, we learned that the God Most High is El Elyon, God the Father. El Elyon means nothing happens without the Father's permission. So if you, uh, Jesus is the Son of God, and so God gave permission for the Holy Spirit to plant the seed into Mary so that the seed would be the Son of God. Jesus said in John chapter 8, I do nothing on my own initiative. Why? Because 1 Corinthians chapter 11 says, Christ is the head of every man, and the man is the head of a woman, and God is the head of Christ. In other words, there is a divine order. I've said this before. Does it mean, it really, when man is the head of woman, it means that we are your covering. We are your knight in shining armor. We're supposed to protect you. We're not supposed to neglect you. We're not supposed to beat up on you. We're not supposed to smack you and knock you around. We're supposed to be kind and gentle to you. We are supposed to treat you like Christ treats his church. That's why I, I find it hard when, 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 when women want to stay with somebody who wants to beat up on them. I'm thinking, get some help for him. And first, get some help for yourself. And, and so that you can understand this is not the normal thing. I, I, I never once have I raised my hand, you know, strike my wife. That, that's just not, I know better, first of all. <laughs> You know, I, she got her, her brother is, is an ex FBI agent. I know him. And uh, I surely didn't want to see that 6'3 dude walking in the house and, uh, you know, <laughs> clocking me. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, I was born at night, but it wasn't last night. <laughs> so now the, the word Mary means blessed among women. Blessed among women. Mary didn't doubt Gabriel's words. She only wanted to know the process. So how is this going to happen? So Gabe tells her how it will be done in Luke chapter 1, verse 36. And he said, Behold, even your relative Elizabeth has also conceived a son in her old age, and she 
who was called barren, is now in her sixth month. Now, let's go to verse 37. For nothing will be impossible with God. Think about this. Jesus said in Luke chapter 18, he said, the things that are impossible with people are possible with God. And then God told Jeremiah in chapter 32, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is anything too difficult for me? So what God is saying to all of us is if, if he's given you a promise from his word, we know this about God. About God. Elizabeth's pregnancy confirms what Numbers 32 says, God is not a man that he should lie. And so if God has given you a promise from his word and the Holy Spirit has confirmed it with you, I mean, and, and your spirit just leaped for joy because you read it and you knew that that was from God. You knew that God was going to come through for you. Then rest on it. Don't doubt. Don't pout. Just believe. You don't have to know all the how. You just need to trust him with the process. But have faith that he's going to do it. If I did not have faith, Remember a couple of weeks ago, I, I, I asked you to give, and I said, I very seldom ask you guys to give, but I was in the verse of Scripture where God gave me the freedom to ask for you to give, and you gave so much that we had an overflow, but guess what? God knew we would need an overflow because there are people in our church who needed some things paid they needed bills paid and some other things, so we had an overflow, and then something else broke down in the church, and so we were able to take care of that because of the overflow. And I was telling somebody else about what we were doing in the month of, uh, the, uh, of, of, thing, of, of November. I said, look, God placed on my heart that we would feed people for free uh, during uh, the, the month of, of uh, November. And I said, and, and then God said, don't stop. Just keep feeding them through the month of, of Christmas, uh, of December. And I, and I said, you know, I, I don't know how we're going, going to feed all these people. I said, but uh, can you pray? I was talking to a friend of mine, Bob LaBelle, I, over at J103. I said, can you pray for me? Do you realize that after he prayed for me, two hours later, I got a call from one of our members, and they said, um, Brother Bernie, he said, uh, you know, you, you called? And I said, yeah, I needed uh, you, you to help uh, uh, with some stuff. And uh, I, I understand that you got some, 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 some toys and some packages and stuff. I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, um, can you meet me at the church? I said, yeah, I'll be up in five minutes. So I came up, and he said, man, I tell you. I, I'm, are y'all feeding people there, you know, at the church every Sunday? I said, well, just through, um, you know, November and December. Uh, you know, it's not in our budget, but I just believe God was going to come through. And so uh, Bob LaBelle had prayed for me earlier that day. And so uh, the member came by to, to drop off the, 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 the packages. And so I said, well, would, would $1,500 help? And I said, What? I said, for what? He said, to, to throw a big thing for Christmas, for, 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 for Christ's birthday. I said, it's more than we need. He said, well, you're going to do it in, in January? I said, well, I don't know. He said, well, I'll give you 2000 He said, now you can, you can do it in December. You can do it in January. And if you've got enough left over, you can do it in February, you know, for Valentine's Day. You do, and he said, you can just do it. I said, what? And I said, look at God. Now, if, if, you, if you don't believe that God answers prayer, then you need to have your salvation checked. Because the God I serve, you don't have to beg, steal, or borrow. Now, now sometimes you got to borrow because you can't, you can't pay this house note. You know, you, can't, you, don't, got no, you don't have enough money. You, you know, I don't have it like that. Now, you may have it like that. But, uh, you know, we had to get a loan for our house. But we were pre-approved, so we were able to walk in there like we had money in our pocket. So, <laughs> so we beat this other dude who was bid bidding on the same house that we are in. And uh, the people that were selling, they said, well, uh, you know, we got somebody else that's already bid on it. I said, well, you know, uh, we already got pre-approved. They said, you did? I said, yeah. They said, well, we, can you wait a couple of days? We've got to wait for him to get approved. I said, no problem. Dude couldn't get approved. Friday. 
Bank said, I'm sorry. Nope, nope, nope. Yeah. And they called us up on the speed dial. Bring the money, <laughs> you know. So we were able to do it. But, you know, all of that is God answering prayer. I mean, because God knew where we wanted to live, and, and he provided for us to live where we wanted to live. And, and, and I thank God for that. And, and I just want to tell you something. Look, God is not a man that he should lie. So let me give you the sticky note. When God speaks, believe it, because he cannot lie. So don't ever doubt it. Only believe, because his truth will always set you free. Now, when the devil speaks, don't believe it, because he's a deceiver, and there's no truth in him. Go back to the first one, because I know some of y'all want to want, want scream shoot this thing, so go ahead and do it, because, uh, uh, you know, I'd love for y'all to put that up on, 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 on your social media network, because this is important for people to understand, because a lot of people don't know. They don't know that God can't lie, because see, they don't believe in the inerrancy of Scripture. They don't believe that, that, that God used men of old who were under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit to write every word, and that they didn't write what God said, they and God finds somebody else to write it. And Paul wrote three books to the Corinthians, but there are only two, the first and second books of Corinthians. You know why? Because Paul was in the flesh when he wrote the third one, or the second one, because the third one is really, uh, the, well, forget about it. He wrote three. The first one that he wrote, the second one, it's called the second, but it's really the third because the second one that he really wrote, uh, he was in the flesh. And so God didn't allow that one to be in the Bible. I mean, you can go back and read your history and you'll check me out. Go to the next screen. But the devil, he speaks. When he speaks, <laughs> don't believe it because he's a deceiver. There is no truth in him. Now, let's go to Luke chapter 1, verse 38. And Mary said, Behold, the bond slave of the Lord, may it be done to me according to your word. Notice what she's saying. Okay, I'm all yours. Let it be done to me according to your word. And the angel departed. Next verse. Now at that time, what time? The time that the angel departed, Mary arose and went with haste to the hill country, to the city of Judea. When? That same day. A month didn't pass. Didn't pass. Two months didn't pass. Three months didn't pass. A week didn't pass. It's the only time she took was time enough to pack up her belongings to get on the road and go see Elizabeth. And she entered the house of Zacharias and greeted Elizabeth. Watch what happens. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, in Elizabeth's womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And she cried out with a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women? And blessed is, watch what she says, blessed is the fruit of your womb. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. She has the seed in her already? Yes. You mean she knows that there's a baby in that womb already? Yep. Why? Because her baby leaped in her womb with excitement, and she was filled with the Holy Spirit and then started prophesying. She started speaking what the Spirit was telling her to speak, and so she cried out and said, Bless among women, and bless is the fruit of your womb. womb. So what does that tell you about all of these people who say that there is not a baby in the womb when there is conception? The Bible says you are a liar. Because if there's not a baby in the womb, if there's not a spirit of the baby in the womb at that time, then how did John the Baptist leap in Elizabeth's womb? 
I'm just asking the question. I mean, this is not even, I mean, she, the, the, the seed is not even a day old. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's not a month. It's not two months, not three months. You know, baby starts showing, you know, and you don't have to loop it. This is the same day. And then she says, and how has it happened to me that the mother, well, she's calling her mother. How is it that the mother of my Lord would come to me? For behold, when the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby leaped in my womb for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what had been spoken to her by the Lord. For he has had regard for the humble state of his bond slave. For behold, from this time on, all generations will count me blessed. Why? Because she met the mother of the Savior of the world before he was even born. How many of you, have you ever seen that? I was studying and I was studying and the Holy Spirit said, you need to stop and read this thing because you're going to miss the point. People just read through scripture and I stopped and I said, whoa, 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 whoa wait, wait a minute. At this time? Yeah. What time? He said, the same time that the angel left. So, how, how many days later? There wasn't no days. She got up in haste to go see Elizabeth. When? Same day. I mean, she just packed up her belongings and then she got on the road and she was gone. So I, 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 I want you to understand. We have heard so many things spoken to us, uh, spoken to us through social media, through the news media, those things are half-truths. And if it's a half-truth, it's a lie. How are you going to tell me that the Bible is a lie and you are the truth? When the Bible says, let every man be a liar and let God be true. So the Bible is the truth. And you can go, you can contradict it all you want to, but you're contradicting God. And I'm just going to step out your way and let you go and contradict him because I'm not going to stand between you and God. I'm not going to defend you on that because my Bible says this about the conception. You can believe whatever you want to believe. You can believe what the world believes and, and you can have at it. But I believe what my Bible says because this, I've done the study and I've done the, the whole thing and that's what it comes up to be. And I just thank God that, uh, you, you know, I, you, you, I have to move on. Mary did three things for God. She surrendered her will to him. She submitted to his will, and she sacrificed herself to him. Do you see that? She, she said, may it be done according to your will. So she surrendered her will to him, and then she submitted to his will. And then she essentially sacrificed herself to him to do whatever he wanted to do with her. And God used her mightily. The Bible says that she was the fulfillment of the seed of the woman promised in Genesis to Eve. Romans chapter 5 says that through one man sin entered into the world and death spread to all men because all sin from Adam until Moses. And Adam was a type of him who was to come, the Bible says in Romans chapter 5. The, the one who was to come is Christ. So Adam was, get this, Adam was willing to die with his bride, but Jesus was willing to die for his bride, the church. See, when Adam saw that Eve had eaten the fruit, he knew that if he ate the fruit, that he would die. But he was concerned that she was going to die, so he said, well, you know, I'm going to die with her. So he ate too because he wanted to die with her because he brought death into the world. Christ came to die as our sacrifice for his church who would become his bride. And he was willing to do that. And folks, 
That's what it tells, uh, that's, that's what the Bible tells all the husbands that we ought to do. We ought to die to ourselves, and, and, and we, we, ought, we ought to be kind to those uh, who, uh, who call themselves, you know, our wives. And we'll, if we're not kind and gentle with them, man, you know, our prayers won't be, won't be heard. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says, you know, if you treat your wife like that, you know, don't even come pray because, you know, I'm not even going to listen to it. But Jesus came to restore our broken relationship with the Father that Adam broke when he chose to disobey God. Without Christ, we all were eternally separated from God. But if you're willing to surrender your will to God, if you're willing to submit to his will, and if you're willing to offer your body as a living and holy sacrifice unto him after you're saved, that is your reasonable service worship. You, you know what Paul was saying when he wrote that verse of Scripture? He was saying in, in, in Romans chapter 12, he says, look, I know y'all were, were trying to do all the things in the Old Testament. But he says, look, there's no more temple to bring all your offerings. He said, you don't have to worry about that. Christ already offered himself up according to the law and the prophets. He said, all he wants you to do now is offer your body as a willing sacrifice, holy and acceptable to him. So have you done that? Have you ever offered your body to the Lord Jesus Christ? Have you surrendered your will to God to be saved? Have you ever submitted to his will after you've been saved? Have you offered your body as a willing sacrifice? Now, when you offer your body, you offer everything that you think you own. We really don't own anything. Everything is on loan from God. Every gift that we have, the Bible says, it comes down from the Father of lights in whom there is no variableness, no shifting shadow. So every, everything you have, every, every stitch on your back, every amount of money in your bank, you know how you got it? God allowed you to have it. You know, well, yeah, I'm, I work for that. Well, if you didn't have good health, you wouldn't be working. So thank God for good health. Well, okay, all right, well, I got this job because of my, my knowledge. No, you didn't. You got that job because God opened the door. Because there are a lot of people that apply for that job, and God gave it to you. You know, I mean, remember now, every good gift comes down from the Father of life. Now, if he opened the door for you, remember what he says? If you knock on this door, it'll open. If you ask, it shall be given. If you seek, you shall find. So all God did was answer your prayer request. So, I mean, don't ever take God's glory. Don't ever take ownership of everything. Don't get so, oh, this is mine. I, no, let it go. I mean, let it go. Whatever, remember now, you're in covenant with God. In a covenant relationship, here's what happens. You bring all of your, if you have any, assets to God. Okay, but really, we didn't have any. So we brought all of our liabilities to God, and God brought all of his assets into the relationship. So we were hopeless. We were spiritually bankrupt. So we came to God, and God made a covenant with us because of our faith in his son. And so he brought all of the assets. He brought everything that heaven owns, and now we are now part owners of all those things because we are now children of the king. And because we are children of the king, we can ask, we can seek, and we can knock, and, we can, and things will be open, open. We can come boldly to the throne of grace to find grace and mercy to help us in our time of need. God has given us every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We have a relationship with him in every relationship. When my wife, we got married. I bought a lot of uh, debt. She was a smart one. She bought assets. Together we have learned how to manage what God gives us. She had to teach me a lot of things, and I've learned some things about how to do certain things. That's why my, my, my time, you know, as an executive, having to be over a million-dollar budget and all that stuff, I was over budget 1% in a, in a six-month period, and my boss called me in the office, and he said, look, if you continue down this path, you're going to be over budget by the end of the year. So he told me, you can't travel nowhere. Uh, you, you are grounded for at least two months until, and I said, wow, man, I mean, it put a crink in my, you know, I said, but now I understand. 
That's why we operate with a budget here. But there are times, there are times when I was just believed by faith that God is going to provide when he tells me he's going to do something. And I just say, Lord, I'm giving this to you. You bless it. And guess what he does? He blesses it. That's why we're able to still feed you. We're still feeding you all the day, too. I don't know what they got. They may have some buns or something. I don't know. Whatever they got, it's going to be good because uh, that's all they do. They do the good stuff for me. I don't have to worry about cooking nothing. I don't have to worry about fixing n- I, nothing. Well, don't, you don't want me to cook nothing. No way. <laughs> Look, let me just finish up here. Luke had personally investigated each eyewitness's account and presented it in his gospel. The question is, do you believe? Do you believe the virgin birth? If not, Demons have more sense than you do because the Bible says demons believe and tremble. But the only problem with that is the difference between demons and us is they can't be saved even though they may believe and tremble. God didn't come to save demons. He came to save people. He came to save us. For those who doubt the birth and the Bible, let me show you something in, uh, in, in 2 Peter, and this is my last verse, 2 Peter chapter 1, it says, The prophets did not, did not think these things up on their own, but they were guided by the Holy Spirit of God. Every word in this Bible is true. It's inerrant. There are no, no conflict. There's, there's no error at all in this book. Matthew wrote from a different vantage point than Luke. Mark wrote from a different vantage point. He got it secondhand from Peter. John wrote from his vantage point because he was one of the guys who who was with uh, Jesus and he was also Jesus' cousin. And and, and so he, he had a personal relationship with him. But each one of them wrote things according to how God used them. Matthew wrote for the Jews. God used Peter, I mean, uh, God used yeah, Peter to, to write to the Gentiles and, uh, well, to, to the Jews also, but also to, uh, to other folks. But, but God used Luke to, to, to write to a group of people that was special to God. So I want you to understand something. Don't ever think that because Luke didn't have something that John had in his, that somehow or another there's a conflict. There is no conflict. They're just writing from different vantage points. That's all that there is. It, there's, there's no conflict. So if you want to have a relationship with God, the Bible says, admit that you've sinned against God. Then ask him to forgive you of your sins, and he will adopt you into his family. The Bible says, as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name. One day every knee will bow, and every, every tongue will confess him as God. Today would be a good day for you to do that if you have never done that. You can have God's peace. You can have peace through the Lord Jesus Christ. His peace is a peace that surpasses all understanding, and it guards our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. And His peace takes care of the brokenness that sin brought into our lives. Remember what God said? God said this. God said, I came to heal the broken heart and to set at free those who are held captive. If you're being held captive by sin, God wants to set you free today. Would you stand where you are? 